What's up, YouTube? Three Pedal J back again. Uh, this time we are in my second favorite garage. Uh, good folks over here at EFI Specialties. Uh, some of you guys that watch Modern Red Hemi's uh, channel are very familiar with, with EFI Specialty. Um, Modern Red Hemi and myself, we, we share the same tuner. Um, Dave helps me out quite a bit. So we're going to fix the dumps on the challenger uh, one of them came out really well and one of them not so well i didn't measure uh very good on that so we're going to fix that real quick um and then we're going to throw it on the dyno and try to dial in uh, 14 psi and get ready for the monastery hit me shit out so with that said take a look around got a challenger right there i don't know what's going on with that that's a that's a uh a scat pack Got another 392. I'm actually doing some work on this Magnum, uh, helping Dave out. You guys might know that car. You might know that car. Uh, shout out to my guy, Modern Red Hemi. Uh, he's on vacation, so the guys over here are uh, taking care of him as well. I don't know what's going on with it, so I won't uh, proclaim to know, but you can see quite a few Mopars come to EFI Specialties. If you guys are uh, in the DMV area and you need some tuning done, I highly recommend Dave and the crew down here. Um, not only because I help out down here, but just because they're just amazing. So uh, let's go ahead and get this thing unloaded, put it in the shop, I'll get it in the air, and then we'll start taking some measurements and try to fix uh, some of the mistakes that we made. Um, in typical fashion, this car is fighting me. I just want to go 1050s. I just want to go 1050s. We just, we just need to say three tenths. Three tenths. That's it. Just want to go 1050s. And this car is fighting me the entire way. But we're going to get it. So sit tight. Here's the car. Here's the, here's the rig. So you guys see. Walking out here. Here's the rig. She's on there. All safe for now. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these straps undone. Um, bring the car in the shop. Here's the straps. I don't know if that's showed up or not, but yeah, there's the straps. Let me get these straps undone. Bring the car in the shop and then uh, get in the air and we'll start taking the measurements, cutting and rewelding. So sit tight. I'll uh, try to bring the dyno session to you guys and um, see what we do. So I haven't done a video like that. So let's hopefully just want to get some numbers, but appreciate everybody for watching. I appreciate everybody for all your support. I'll ask now. So I don't have to ask later if uh, you guys like what I'm doing and you guys support my content. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, if you could just help me out with the like, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. I'd really be great. Uh, it really helped me out I'm trying to get my channel to, to get some traction. Um, and we'll see. But in any event, uh, we're going to get ready for this modern street hitting shootout. So stay along, stay tuned, and hopefully we can make this little uh, baby 5.7 uh, scream for its life and run a 1050. All right, guys, stand by. All right, guys, I am in the shop finally. Car's in the air, as you can see. We got it unloaded. Uh, so let me go ahead and walk around and show you guys some of the small issues that we're dealing with, and then we, I'll show you the major issues that we're dealing with. So there's the dump that we built, Mac and I built. Um, and I took and eyeballed this. I didn't take the measurements accurately like I did uh, on the passenger side. So we have we have a brand new wideband put in there and the uh, new NGK uh, narrow band for the O2 sensor for the front. There are there are four total O2 sensors, uh, five with the wideband, but I'm only gonna use the front two. Um, so one of the first issues, let me see, where did I put this bill? Well, that's bright. Is if you look here, you will see we're dripping oil. And the reason being is that fitting, which is very, very expensive. Um, I crushed it when, when I was trying to load the car because the pipe, which I'll show you the problem with the pipe here in a second. Uh, was hanging low so it actually hit the trailer and pulled the entire turbo uh off from the other v-band that connects to the manifold so that was that's the first issue we're going to deal, deal with so we're going to fix the oil drain line uh it's cracked it's bent and it's cracked uh you can see where it's leaking 
Um, so I have another one. Uh, these are fragile parts, so they're not cheap at all. I think these are like 45 bucks a piece. Uh, I'm OCD, so I always order spares, and thankfully, um, I have one. So we're gonna go ahead and open this bear up for anybody who who's doing this. So you're probably wondering, like, why is it so expensive, Jay? So here's the deal. Here's the part number. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call it out. So you see where it says dash 10 or number 10 nut. And then it says, uh, let's see if you can see that, dash or number eight hose rounding or reducing hose end, 90 degree. So that's what it is. This is a, a dash 10 to a dash eight hose fitting. So um, you can't just go buy these off of eBay cheaply. You got to go to a reputable manufacturer for it. So uh, yeah, $50 parts um, that I'm just randomly breaking because I'm a knucklehead. So the only part we need out of this deal is this, this part right here. All we need is this part right here. Oh, geez, let me probably faster do it this way. It's super, super long. So that's the only part we need for that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that off and then we'll put it in a device and we'll make it. All right, so stand by. All right, guys, well, you can see here that it's bent severely. It's crushed compared to the other one. And I don't know if you can see that little crack right here, but it's definitely cracked, so that's why it's leaking. Um, if you look at the new one, smooth, doesn't have a crack in it, so that's the deal. So literally, we're just gonna slide this back in here, um, put the head on it, and I'll be good to go. So uh, that's the quick and down easy repair for for this deal um you can see i'll show you uh real quick too that it it got smashed and drugged pretty badly so i am not surprised you see how easy that's going on because it's the correct fitting and everything's already dialed in of course i'm gonna drop it because i as i always say am a knucklehead you guys have heard me say that a million times man it's also very slippery because this is uh engine oil that these deals deal with and there it is that is simple well that one's super easy because i've already had this built it wasn't too difficult to, to do this i'm gonna toss my old saws all blade away toss this away in the trash boom one problem solved now i won't be leaking all over the dyno oil getting yelled at you don't want that all right guys so as you can see the angle is off, um, and this is where the problem lies, right here. Let me just back up, because I, I know this is terrible. But you see how it's hitting the floor right there? Um, I should have had this bend. It, come, it has to come off and go to this side to get around the gate. So here's the gate right here, and yes, it's upside down. Here's the gate, and the gate's angled out in front of the car, right? So. I kind of missed with how we set this up. So I'm thinking we might be able to salvage this if we kind of cut this and re-weld it here. We may not even have to, maybe if we cut here and then kind of, I don't know, we can, we can cut this deal and kind of re-angle it because it's hitting here and we really just need to come we need to like swoop and then follow this body line all the way back to here where it is and have it just dump right here. I don't want to dump it in, in front of the tire. So I might angle this. I might angle this deal in that way. So it's dumping in front of like, you know, the diff. I don't want it really dumping in front of the tires and we could, we can fix that as well. Um, so I don't know that we have to cut this up and get all crazy with this. So once Rick gets here, I'm sorry, once Matt gets here, we'll, we'll figure this out and um, adjust it. I, I don't think this is going to take terribly long. Um, and as you can see, uh, I mean, it's, it's super bright light. I apologize about that. Um, it's fixed. It's not leaking anymore. Uh, so we're good there. All right. 
Uh, stay tuned, we'll get this fixed and then uh, I'll uh, get back with this video. All right guys, so I'm at the shop and we are about to start chopping up some shit that we already made and making it better. So. So, I'm about to chop the wheel up, measure it out, and then uh, try to make sure that it goes with it. I think it has to go up, right? Remember, it was, True. it was, it was, it was already down. It needs to go up. All right, so that's what I might be thinking there. Cause... Yeah. So we'll put it up there and then we'll measure. And then, like you said, I see what you're saying. Now we just do the pie cut to make it work. Fantastico. That might be the move right there, homie. And then I'll cut. I just have to watch. You have to watch what angles you cut here because it makes it elongated. Yeah. So, I don't know, put this in place real quick for us. Yep. We got any uh, Let me clean up the things I can clean that up with? Yeah. Because you're going to yell at me if, if I don't clean up what you cut. <laughs> All right, guys. And then here we go with the other one. Um, I don't know if you guys remember or not. So that, that guy's down there and it's all like down low. So then here's the new, the new location. So once we weld this guy in here, boom. Beautiful. We'll weld that in. It'll be good. And then this one will be the dyno wide band. And then uh oh, I put that in backwards. Ha, look at that. Boom. Like that. Then we'll take this plug out and put it in here when we're not dyno in. So these are gonna be my my dyno dumps and when I go to the to the track. So like when I build my 6-4 again, we'll put these back on there. Everything should fit up exactly the same. Cheer, everything. Here we go. So here we are, fella, ladies and gentlemen. And they thems. And, and they thems. You are out of control, dude. All right. So Mac is about to uh, tack. I'm cry. Just use it. All right. So we're tacking it in. He's a crazy man here. No, no damn gloves or anything. But hey, I respect his gangster. So once we get this tacked up, we're gonna test. Test fit, make sure we're good to go, and then uh, we'll burn it in. I think we're gonna be all right though. Yeah, okay. I mean, cool. All right, guys. So here's the exhaust sound. We got it all situated. We got to white with it for a while to get to get the turn downs to work, but the dust to work. But I like how it sounds. It's kind of aggressive. It's kind of aggressive. It's starting to come down. So we're gonna pull it around to the dyno. Pretty interesting. What's up, YouTube? So, I'm home from EFI Specialties. Uh, it's about 9.25 at night, and I'm going to try to get something finished up and close out the video. So, we ended up making a maximum of 793 horsepower and 751 foot-pounds of torque, something like that, um, on 14 pounds of boost. My boost controller is still not dialed in. Um, it was making 14 when it should have been making 10. Um, and then when we took it, unhooked the the, uh, the solenoids, they, then it started making um, 10 like for the gate springs. So I have to figure out what's going on with the solenoids. Um, I think once we get that worked out, 
and we can get the boost controller to, to do what it's supposed to do and figure it out. Um, I think we'll be in good shape. So ultimately, the car is still together. Um, stop gap 5.7 for the win, honestly, because it's actually doing better than the built 6.4. Seeing how the built 6.4 is not here anymore. Um, but that's going to be it for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I tried to give you guys a full, uh, a thorough inside look at what happens when I go to the dyno. It's almost always a problem, but we solve problems. So, um, till next time, catch you later. Peace.